Well, I had quite the ride coming out here today. I was supposed to be coming out here with my granddaughter, but she got sick at the last moment, and uh, Linda is staying home with the other two, with two other granddaughters. I got four, I love them all. <laughs> I'm really disappointed that my uh, granddaughter, Ricky, couldn't come with me today, but we'll do something together again. I wanted to come out here because I, I have a new to me tent that I was just really anxious to try. I'll show it to you in a minute here. I'll, or I'll tell you about it here in a minute. And uh, I just needed just to get out and just kick back and just enjoy. Well, this is the first, well, this is the second 70 degree day we've had this year. We had one a, a couple of weeks ago. And today and tomorrow is supposed to be like 70, 75. And then it's supposed to snow the middle of next week. <laughs> well, yeah. Good old Montana. <laughs> I got this little sheltered spot for camping that I think only I know about because no one else camps here. I'm not too far off of a hiking trail. In fact, I can hear some people coming now, but uh, pretty much I'm just nice and tucked away back in here. I got this bluff behind me and it's really nice because that's the direction the wind is coming from. So I'm out of the wind down here because it's blowing 20 today, but I had a long ride coming out. It wouldn't have been near as far if I didn't lose my jacket. It fell off the, it came out from underneath the bungee cords on the rear rack of the bike. And I got here and I noticed my jacket was missing. So I unloaded all my gear and I had to go ride way back out again and find my jacket. Luckily it was only a couple miles away, but good thing it was still laying there, but it is a nice day to be out. It was tough getting in here. I had to push the bike through a lot of this willow brush. Handlebars don't go 
through brush like this too easy. There is a bit of a game trail or something here, but it's still real narrow. <laughs> so it wasn't fun getting the bike in here. Well, today I brought the Fido T1 cargo e-bike. I own three e-bikes and I've had a dozen because I do reviews on them, but there's three that I've kept. The Magicycle Cruiser, a Magicycle Deer, and this Fido T1 Cargo. This, this thing is just, it's, it's a beast. It's really nice, especially if you got a lot of, of weight to carry. And I, ha I came out here with, well, look at the camp, chair, table, tent, uh, backpack, water, everything. I, I came out here with quite a bit of uh, stuff today. The thing that makes it good though is that the rear rack is really low, so when you're really loaded down, uh, it's the bike still remains stable, as long as you don't put too much gear in the front basket. But that's another thing, is it's got a front basket and it's really ha handy, you know, for hauling your stuff out, especially on a camping trip like this. Yeah, this is a, it's a great bike. Another piece of gear I brought out here is this Opez Exodus 600. It's um, 600 watts on the AC over here. It's actually a 256 watt hour unit. It's small enough that, yeah, I can bring it along on, on trips like this. It's, this is what it was designed for. Just camping and then charging up your phone, your camera batteries, your drone batteries. That's exactly what it's doing right now. I, the review is going to come out in just a couple of days on this. If you, this is not on the market today, but it will be in a couple days. I've been using it for like the last month. This is the second time I've had it out now on a, on a regular camping type trip. So um, yeah, you'll see that pretty soon. Oh, and the neat thing about it is it's not a lot of bells and whistles on this. Opez does make power units with bells and whistles. This one was designed to be affordable. It's got what you need and nothing that you don't. But it's the tent that I was so anxious to get out here and try. This is a U.S. Army surplus. It's an ICS improved combat shelter. It's a one-man tent. I know all you Marines out there are going, oh, the Army has tents? <laughs> but yeah, this one I got. I saw these a year or more ago, and at that time they were like $200 and up. So I didn't feel I could afford it. but. I managed to get this one for 120. They had two options. They had good for 100 and they had very good for 120. And I bought it and it's been used like one time. You can tell by the tent pegs, they just haven't been even pushed into the ground yet. And it had like a teaspoon of sand inside. Other than that, it's like new condition. It doesn't have a lot of headroom. I can barely sit up in it, but uh, it's extremely well made. So I, yeah, I went ahead and bought it and I'm glad I did. I'll see if I can show you a little bit inside because one thing it's got, well, here's the main sleeping. It's just big enough for one man and you can fit a little bit of gear in here. It's probably 36 inches wide at the across. And then it's got this huge vestibule on the back. I know the light's not too good in here, but I've got some junk thrown in there, my jacket, but you can't quite see it too good because there's a ground cloth kind of in here, but. It's a big vestibule and it zips open. There's a door so you could actually go out this way. But the cool thing about that is with the door open, you could lay in here and you could cook inside the vestibule. So yeah, and it's a big vestibule. From my hand here to the apex out there, that's probably about 40 inches anyway. And of course, being US military mill spec, it's built extremely well. It's a blackout tent. So if you got everything zipped up, you still have some ventilation, but light doesn't escape it. So it's designed like that on purpose. Or you can have, this can all be screen on this side, or this can have the blackout on this side too. Let me show you here, this part here. So this zips open, so it's just a screen on one side, but if you've got this zipped together, it's blackout on the other side, so. And from what I understand, these things are absolutely waterproof. It's got a bathtub floor on it, so you could actually have water running past you. 
which may come in handy tonight. It's supposed to rain. <laughs> but you can actually have water running past you and it won't get inside because the floor, the floor comes up all around. So that's pretty cool that way too. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. Well, I'm in central Montana. This is the Missouri River. I just saw a bald eagle pull something out of the water and it looked like it was a snake and snakes do swim. But as he flew overhead, it was a stick. Must be building a nest. All of those high transmission lines across the river tells you that there's dams along here. And there are, I think there's three in this area. Back where my camp is, up against the cliff there, there was no wind and I did that on purpose, but it was hot. I was baking in the sun. It feels good to be out here with the breezes blowing. One really cool thing to do is to canoe or float the Missouri River. People have done it all the way from near the headwaters, which is in southwest Montana. And there's a lot of portages you got to do. Or you can put in on the east side of Fort Benton, Montana, which is right in central Montana. And you can pretty much go all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. There are dams you got to portage around, but people do that all the time. Now, Linda and I did that. We put in at a place called Coal Banks Landing and we took out at Kip Landing. It was a five day trip. We did that several years ago. I've been wanting to do it again. I better do it before we get too old. Um, yeah, it's about the time of year to do that. Canoe trip down the Missouri. Well, I'm starving. <laughs> I haven't eaten today yet, except for a candy bar, but I'm gonna go back and make some lunch. Well, Linda and I bought some things on, on Amazon, to some just camping gadgets, things that look like, eh, maybe they could be good, maybe not, but we bought them to try out to see if they're any use or not, or if they're junk. So we save you the trouble if it turns, and the money if it turns out to be junk. But this little butane stove uses this, these containers. And if you look at hiking butane stoves with those short little round butane containers that cost a fortune, um, these are cheap. You can buy a dozen of these for maybe 45 bucks or something for a dozen. Uh, the reason they're so cheap is because they're used in professional cooking all the time for what sous chefs use, the little butane stoves. Anyways, um, it uses these and it just plugs into the side here. Just got to get it lined up right. Yeah, it just goes in and turns a little bit. Not bad. And then it's got, you could put a big pan on it. I Yeah, I tried it at home and it worked well. Oh, and it's got piezoelectric start. So, I don't know, could be good. But that's what I brought to cook today, so it better work. Oh, and it's got feet that fold out on the bottom too. Oh, price on this? About, I think I paid like $16. That's all. Lunch, ch chicken and dumplings. Okay, it failed. Piezoelectric start won't work on it. Good thing I brought a lighter. Well, you don't have to buy this one. <laughs> it worked at home, but piezoelectric start, it quit. Stove works though. Ow, that bugger's hot. Looks and smells like chicken and dumplings. It's hard to find a place to put this chair where the legs don't sink into the soft ground. <laughs> Whoa, because that's what it's doing. Try over here, I guess. Yep, it's not working either. Yeah, this is all real soft ground. Hey, you ever notice that they never put enough salt in meals? Like, I just tasted this one and it needs salt. And another thing is when something says organic, this one doesn't say organic, 
But when they say organic, guaranteed no salt, and then they put some other kind of spice in there that's bitter to me. And it's like, is that supposed to take the place of the salt? <laughs> so I'm kind of wishing I had brought some salt along. This needs it. Uh, don't, don't say anything about my sodium level. I, my, my last blood test said that my sodium level was low. So I've been drinking Gatorade in the afternoon and just to help out, I've been putting electrolytes in my water. But anyway, uh, this looks really good. It's really thick. I'm surprised, except for needing a little salt. <laughs> it's really good. The chicken is actually a, a real consistency. It actually tastes like regular chicken. Of course, peas and carrots and dumplings. I'm going to eat this and I'll talk to you in a bit. So the Mountain House chicken and dumplings was actually really, really good. I have to put this up in my top three. It's like uh, lasagna and meat sauce, chili mac, my favorite, and now chicken and dumplings. I didn't mind this at all. If you look on the back though, I see that it's best by May 2052. Don't tell Linda because I told her I needed to go on this trip to eat up some of this food before it went bad. To keep things simple, I just went with instant today. <laughs> Sometimes you got to do that though. You get a little overloaded with equipment and everything and on, especially on a bike ride, you got to try to go as light as you can, but it's not bad. Well, Linda and our two daughters and three of our granddaughters, maybe four, I don't know. They all went to lunch at a specialty burger place called Street Burgers. Fantastic burgers. If it wasn't for the fact that the chicken and dumplings that I had was pretty darn good, I'd be jealous. <laughs> but I did all right. It was actually good. <laughs> well, traveling down the Missouri River here by canoe makes for a really interesting trip. For example, you go through a lot of BLM land and a lot of BLM campsites along the river. Only a couple of them are accessible by vehicle. Most of the time, you guys, they're just for the canoeists or the people rafting down the river. The thing is, after the trappers and Lewis and Clark kind of discovered this area, people wanted to come out here and seek their fortune. Uh, farmers and ranchers, for example, homesteaded out here. And the only way they could get here from St. Louis was by steamboat, paddle wheeler, coming up the river. The, as far as they could go was Fort Benton, which is about 35 miles down the river from where I'm at right now. But along the river, they built their, their dugouts and then they built their log cabins and every supply that they possibly could get came to them by river. And there was no other way in. So the river supplied everybody along that route. Well, then all of a sudden, they put the railroad into Fort Benton and it bypassed the river. And then those people could no longer get supplies, the ones that lived along the Missouri River. So they had to relocate <laughs> and they did. But the cool thing about floating down the river is those log cabins are still there. Some of them with a lot of original stuff left behind like pots and pans and dishes and things of that sort. And the BLM allows you to go ahead and treat those cabins like a museum and you're welcome to go in and, and look things over. So as you're going down the river, uh, usually you get a map from the, um, from the state of Montana and it shows you where, those, where the cabins are so you can plan your stop accordingly. That was one of the most fascinating things that Linda and I saw. And the thing is, when they first, when a settler first got here, the first thing he had was a tent, right? A canvas temp tent of some sort. And winter was coming on, so the first thing they built was a dugout where they dug back into the embankment and ran a smokestack up through the dirt, through the ground and everything, and they spent the first winter in the dugout. Then the next spring, they would start building their cabin. The dugouts were then used as root cellars after that. So when you go see these cabins, you can still see the original dugout in a lot of, at a lot of them. So that's pretty cool too. Life is good right now. <laughs> it's nice here. Well, I solved the problem of my chair sinking into the mud. I'm in the high water mark here. 
of the river. So there's all kinds of flotsam and stuff. In fact, there was a big piece of rubbish back here. I did, wasn't paying any attention to. It's probably in part of my video, but it's just stuff that gets carried in by the river, I think. Camp is tucked in behind this hill here pretty good, really sheltered. I don't think anybody's even noticed me here today. Because I'm kind of stealth camping. The There's a state park off to my side here, but the boundary line of the state park is on the top of this cliff, so I'm just outside the boundary. There's no camping allowed in the state park, but, but there is here. It's been perfect. Looks like my water's about boiled. Uh, see here, lasagna with meat sauce. That to, that's a good one. This is a good one. Little cottontail rabbit came to visit. He went up behind my chair here, and he's digging into the hillside there. Don't know what he's digging for. He must know. Doesn't seem to be afraid of me at all. This is a wide-angle lens, but my... My face to his face, about eight feet. <laughs> That's all. You know, looking at the ingredients, it's all natural stuff in here. I thought it'd be a whole list of chemicals, but it's all just good stuff. Uh, yeah, that looks good. It's the Mountain House brand, and of course this stuff isn't cheap. <laughs> Not at all, but it's so convenient. Well, I brought a beer. Nice one. Had it chilling in the river all day. Yeah, that worked. It's been really quiet. Just some boys on the other side that are fishing. That's about all I can hear. Hope they're catching. I camped here once before and there was like a thousand geese <laughs> out on the river in front here. And you know that geese don't shut up all night long? They keep making noise the whole entire night. <laughs> Anyways, tonight's just the sound of the crickets and the frogs, so uh, it's going to be a peaceful night. Hey, I'm going to turn in, you guys. Uh, we'll see you in the morning.
Well, good morning. Uh, <laughs> it was peaceful last night. Very quiet. But if I said I slept good, I'd be lying. You know, at my age, don't sleep too good on camping mats. And I've got two of them in, the, in there, one on top of the other. But I may not have slept well, but I slept long. <laughs> and it's a beautiful morning. Heavy dew. It's going to be a hot day for April. <clears throat> And it's supposed to get up near 80 degrees today, so I'll just get things dried out and kind of spend a little more time here in camp and then I'll head back home. But it is nice out. It's very beautiful. Yeah, a little tent worked out great. I was perfectly comfortable inside. And I've got the vestibule opened up and back, kind of airing it out because it gets, you know, it gets moisture on the inside. But you're separated between, well, it's got the uh, regular mosquito netting that surrounds you and then the fly on top. So I stayed dry myself. It's all right. You can see what I was sleeping on here. Let me move my jacket. There's a inflatable like this. It's a couple inches thick. And then I've got an exercise mat underneath that. So I was warm enough. It got pretty chilly last night though, but I was all right. This is looking upstream here. There's a dam right around the bend there. You can see the powerhouse. And if you look at the dark line in front of me, you can see where the river came up during the middle of the night. Uh, in the evening, I could actually hear the roar of the water over the dam increase. And I saw the water level start coming up. So it was probably snow melt from yesterday. They were probably, probably releasing a lot more water. Now it's down again. Just the ebb and flow of the Missouri River. It's just all because of snow melt. I'm along what they call the portage route. When Lewis and Clark came up the river here back about 1803, they met waterfalls starting down. There's a, a series of waterfalls coming up the river. The first one is further down here and they had to portage around it. And the portage route took them up beyond this cliff here where the, there was a way for them to get up. They had to build wheels and trucks out of cottonwood trees. They built actually round wheels, Flintstone style. <laughs> And they had to move all of their gear up and around this part of the, of the Missouri River. I think it took them two months to do this little stretch through here. But they did, and they came all the way up around here until they got to the other side of what's now Great Falls, Montana. It's gonna be a little tough getting out of here this morning. The first thing I gotta cross is a really a short but very steep embankment that I can't get the bike loaded with gear up. can barely get the bike up. So I'm going to have to <clears throat> pack my stuff to the top of that embankment, then get the bike up and then load up up there. It'll be a little bit of a job, but yeah, I went and looked and scoped out the best possible route last night. <laughs> and I think I've got a plan. We'll see how that goes.
Well, I'm all packed up and ready to go. Hey guys, thanks a lot for coming along on this trip. I hope, I hope I didn't bore you. <laughs> I hope I showed you some beautiful scenery. I actually had a very nice, nice time out here and and I, I don't get out here in the summertime because it gets real snaky, if you know what I mean. So this is probably my last trip to this spot, but uh, there'll be others. Hey, thanks a lot. Like, share, subscribe. You all know that drill. We'll see you around. Thank <laughs> you.